So Substance Alchemist is out and this is an application where you can create your own materials in an artistic way. You could use Substance Designer but it's a lot more complex. In this video you're gonna talk about how to create a material from an image. You could use Substance Bitmap to material but this is included in Substance Alchemist. If you'd like to see in-depth tutorials about Substance Alchemist, I'll leave you a link in the description below to this page where you can find all the ins and outs and everything you need to know to get started with Substance Alchemist. In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the things that I use to create materials. We're also gonna use Gigapixel AI from Topaz Labs. This is not necessary for this tutorial, but it will help a lot. Gigapixel AI simply gets a low resolution image and brings it up to a high resolution image using machine learning and AI. So I'm using DuckDuckGo.com to search for an image because everybody else uses Google, right? So I like reptiles and I'm gonna do a material with reptile skin. You can even get an image like this one and you can bring this into Photoshop and just grab a little bit of it. Or you can use Crop in Alchemist to use to just crop a bit of the image and use that instead. So I really like this image. I'm not sure if it's from a frog or a lizard, but I'm gonna use this. So I'm just gonna go view file, I'll right click, save image as, and save that in my desktop. You have different pieces of geometry that you can use by going to mesh. I usually like to start with a plane because this gives me a better representation of my height map. You got some of the environments that you'll find also in Substance Painter. So I'm gonna use AI Gigapixel and I'll just drag and drop my image here. And I'm gonna create a higher resolution version of my image. I'll go for a TIFF image, 16 bits, it's fine, and press start. You can see the difference. This is the internet version, and this is the Topaz AI Gigapixel version. So now that I have a high resolution version, I'm gonna take this into Alchemy. So I'll just drag and drop my new image into layers. Already generated maps for me. So if I go here, I have a base color, normal, roughness, metallic, height, ambient occlusion, opacity, everything here ready to go. So my first step is going to go into base material and select a surface type. I'm going to go for organic. Roughness is not going to do much at this point. And next step would be bitmap to material. And here I can control my initial surface scale. So I'm guessing this would be something like, this would occupy like um, maybe 20 centimeters on a reptile. So I'm going to go and say 20 centimeters approximately. Now the height scale is how high these scales are. Let's say they're probably about one centimeter, I would say. Let's go into our height. And if I choose my height map here, I got large, medium, and small, and you can see what this does. So I don't, the large is going to create, it's going to control these huge bumps here. I don't want these huge bumps, so I'll just bring this down. And it's convenient that you see this in both views. Okay. And you see what it's doing. So now medium, so medium frequency details if you look at if you look here you see what's happening there okay so not too much of that and then tertiary or small frequency details will give me a bit of a bump so you you have to keep changing your perspective see what's happening there so this is high frequency detail so I'm happy with that now let's see our roughness so this is a reptile skin I want it to be really shiny. Move my light here a little bit. So my base value. So I bring this down, it will be shiny. If I go up, not so shiny. And the variations, of course. Nothing is shiny everywhere. And some softness on our variations. And the occlusion, I usually leave it as it is because I don't see much of a difference at this stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an equalizer. And this will help me later on when I start tiling this. As you can see, you don't see the seams as much as you were seeing them before. And he also equalizes or fixes a little bit of the big height differences. You have your global displacement amplitude right here. And I usually click this pretty low and I control, uh, control it uh, with the, the effects. 
and your tiling. I have a tree tile here, so it's enough to see my seams. I need to see these seams here so that I can fix them and make this texture seamless. So before I start tiling this, I like to add a, a crop effect so that I can better select what I will use. The crop effect is pretty straightforward. As you move it, you can see what's happening in the 3D view. And you can stretch and find a place that kind of brings those seams away. Okay, this will make the tiling process a lot easier. Now in the website, they show you how to use this effect, this tiling effect. But now you have one that's called Make It Tile Advanced. And I find this to be a lot better than the, the normal tiling. So keep your eyes on these seams here. And you see what happened? That, that's cool. And now with this, these sliders here, we can control the size. I mean, if you can't really see it, let me just... They're here. So it creates these seams right here. Okay, Carmenon Influence. I believe this is the size, is it? Is it the size? No, it's the influence of the seams, so... <laughs> I don't even need to tell you what these sliders do. You just, for yourself, just tr use them and you, straight away you can see what's happening. Some images is easier to see than others. Moss smoothness. And they're starting to disappear, and that's so great. It is such a cool tool. Last last couple of days, all I've been doing is materials, using Alchemist, and it's such a pleasure to use something like this. I mean, other other type of material creator applications are just too fiddling. This is so simple to use. Your threshold. It just creates like um, it creates some distortion on the edges and helps blending everything together. I suggest you use all the sliders, move everything, and just because this is super fast, it just updates as soon as you start touching the the, the, the sliders. And in some textures, you, the sliders don't look like they're doing anything, but in other ones, they make a huge difference. So I, after I made this tileable and it looks tileable, and you can use like a different mesh, sometimes it helps. Look at the sphere, for example. And the sphere usually shows you seams right away. And if I'm not really seeing seams here, that's all good and jolly. Sometimes I, I can't get rid of the seams right away with the Make It Tile at Advanced. So if I come back to my crop and I start moving my crop around and I usually get a good result. You can even go so far to add your other tiling. Uh, to it, and it's it's even it's as simple as the, as these make it tiled advanced. I would say that this is not even advanced. This is like simpler than the other one. Okay. So after the tiling is done, uh, they got a great one here that is the delighter, and this kind of kind of balances out the light of your texture. But usually what happens is as soon as you have the delighter, you kind of lose a bit of detail. And if I go back to my plane, I like to keep working on a plane here. So it's cool to, after this, add an adjustment layer. And go to albedo. You can bring back a bit of the sharpness that you had before. You see what this is doing? So it's bringing me of the sharpness of the sharpness of the base color. Also, I like to go to ambient occlusion and turn this on so we recompute the ambient occlusion. And this texture didn't make a much di much difference, but I've I've seen it on other textures make a huge difference when you recompute it. And kind of like adjust the your AO and you can also go back and see what's doing to your AO channel. So you can adjust this. I like to keep my eyes on my 3D view because that's where the end result is going to be. And your luminosity. Sometimes things get too dark. You can use a little bit of luminosity here. Now here we can also adjust our roughness using reflection. And where are my reflections? There they are. There's my light. 
So I remember I said I wanted this to be really shiny. It's reptile skin, so if I just bring down my intensity it will become shinier. But that's too much. I don't want any shininess on the on the edges there. Just on these bits. I can use contrast to fix that. Or I can use a dirt mask after this. That's too much contrast. Okay, we can also fix our height here. And yeah, we got smooth elevation here. You can see what's doing. And sharpness there. Bringing everything out a little bit. And the balance of the detail. So, the full scale, height elevation. Like I said, just go through all of these. You can do them all really quickly, and it's worth it because a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it makes a huge difference. Okay, after the adjustment and the delighter. Sometimes this is this is more than enough. Let's look at this with a different mesh. Uh, let's grab material mesh here. And we got a, a little fella here. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay, I can see. Is it the seam there? Yeah, there's a seam there. Well, you can fix this by uh, moving around with your crop, like I said. I don't want to make this video too long so I just want to show you that you can then to make this to make this create some high frequency detail to create some high frequency detail because right now it's a bit there's nothing happening here on the top of these bits so you can add for example going to the resources and you can add maybe some fine letter and so you can add a, a material that you've already created or from the substance source and you can start combining this and this is so cool uh, I like to come here and just go to curvature blend uh, usually it's what works best and let's say top material uh, contrast Instead of edge, go to cavity maybe. It's gonna grab a. I just gotta keep changing this stuff and seeing what what's the best. Maybe bottom material and then change the contrast here. So you can create some high frequency details on your textures that you downloaded. Maybe uh, I'm using I'm using the. Um, this material leather but you can use some other textures that you have and by changing the material scale down here you can make them tile a lot and have like really high frequency stuff going on in here color match so I can bring back the color of my bottom material which is my original material if I'm not wrong Really excited about this, guys. This is so cool. And now I can, uh, well, in adjustment, you, you can change in your albedo, you can change the U and make this a different color. That's cool. You can also add, let's add it on top here, uh, color variation and select the number of colors you like. And you can either just pick a color individually or you can go to inspire and grab an image that you that has colors that you like you can create your own folders for your library by pressing this button and creating a folder and I can save my material here if I go now to inspire my material is already loaded up there and I'm gonna grab an image I got this really cool chameleon 
So I'm gonna place this chameleon up here. And now this is gonna extract colors that I can use as a color palette. So it's based on purity, I can base it on other stuff like base it on median. And that will produce this power and this palette. And I can then press generate variation and get that result. And now I like this one, I can just drag it into my folder. And I have a new material. And now I can go back to create. Select this file, press my color variation, and there are my new colors for my for my palette. And I can even reduce the number of colors or increase it and add a new one. And if I'm not happy with that, I can just delete it. And now I can keep working on this. It's in my library, I can keep working on it. Anytime I want, I'm just going to create. Open up the layers, select it and keep working on it. When Every time I make any changes, I just press save and keep working on it. Then as soon as you're happy, you press the export, export current view, and you can export this as a Substance Painter material, smart material, I believe, or you can export this, for example, TIFF, and you can select on the left all the maps that you want to export your material name your destination folder export and you got a material from an image that you just downloaded from the internet isn't that just great <laughs> so i just wanted to share this with you guys uh, because i've been excited about it and having a lot of fun with it so uh, i'll see you in the next video don't forget to like and subscribe support me on patreon bye